And but we've had uh, players in our team who already are being touted as one of the players of the tournament. The goalkeeper, for instance, yeah. he made outstanding saves. And so there were some shining lights in that team, weren't there? When I say peripheral, it's not 100%, about 60% peripheral. Of course, uh, uh, Vincent Yama is a regular for Lille, and it was demonstrated in the way he, you know, he went about in the match. 23 saves, he was, if you look at the World Cup chart, he's been, except somebody was going to break that, but he's got the most saves in the World Cup. Yesterday, you had it. He has the most in the World Cup. So that's a demonstration of the fact of somebody who plays in 90 minutes for his club and all that. You go into a World Cup peripheral, you don't expect magic. If you plan, if you fail to plan, yeah, I don't know, you know, you've, you failed, you know, right from the first. So we had some good players in the team, but the issue still remains that a lot of them were peripheral. So we, we don't expect Keshi to do magic. That's one. Secondly, if you watch the match, it was lacking in depth. There is no two ways about it. You know, sitting down, chewing gums. You know the issue of the. Do, does that affect your tactical <laughs> discipline if you're no, sitting no, or standing? You, you, you need to have a psychological impact on the player. Stand up, ginger. It does a lot of things as a coach. You don't just sit down and be chewing gum. No, there are a lot of things you're standing up and you're shouting will bolster in players. But sitting and down and chewing gum, or sitting down, could be him studying the game and then. Pass on instruction to a substitute that can go give it to his colleagues. No, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. But he doesn't sit all the time. Several times he stands and talks. So that's something neither here nor there in the, terms of your success or failure uh, in this kind of games. There were, a lot of, there were a lot of things that were missing in Keshi. And uh, I don't know. But there's another thing uh, we, we, we noticed this morning. You know, a good coach don't come out to criticize the players openly. This morning, Keshi is already telling the whole world that Yama was the reason why we lost out. And that's bad. To me, Yama was one of the best. But if you don't provide a security for him, of course, he would let in all the goals. But for all the saves, I think he deserved, he deserved some accolades. Not to come out openly to say he's, he, he cost. But was, even yesterday, uh, after the match, there was that announcement that he was going to step down. Yes. If a coach you look up to, you know, to speak good about you, comes out in the public and make pronouncement that you're bad. It could ginger you to no, say. I mean, I mean Keshi now, in yeah. terms of his resignation. He's seen it. He's, he's seen it before. So let me go down before they do the Nigeria, of course, you know what? You know what to expect. The acts will always dangle. The but acts will always dangle. What was the target that we gave to him? Did he fulfill them or not? No, we, we actually wanted to equal the African record. If we had reached the quarterfinal. Didn't we equal it? We were in the last 16. If yeah. we had won this match, we would have equaled the African record. We are just in the last 16. No, well, was that the target they gave to Coach Keshe? If you get quarterfinals, Nigerians will. No, no, you haven't answered the question. All right. What was the target given to Keshe? Everybody going to the World Cup has one target, and that's to leave the trophy. Not no, in, not in there was a target that was given to Keshe. Keshe. What was the target? Semi-finals. Yes, semi-finals. No, that wasn't the target. What was the target? I believe the target given to him was second round. That was the target. Second round? Yes. You go to the World Cup and you want to come out the second round? Nigeria has a... Look, if you've gone to the World Cup before and you achieved the feat, second round, you shouldn't go to the World Cup again and want to achieve the same feat, at least a step further. And I, I believe the target was quarterfinals. If you have gone beyond quarterfinals, that's an African record, quarterfinals. So as we... A claim to be African giant, at least the least we can do for this country is to, you know, move up to that quarterfinal stage. And that, that was so, you, so you think uh, Keshi lacks a technical depth? Yes, I, I, any day, anywhere, I will tell you. Are, then, you, then, are you implying that we don't have any coaches within the country that have no, technical we do, depth? No, we do have, we do have. You know, attitude also comes to play. You know, when selecting a coach, attitude. You know, when Keshi was in his pay days as a player, he was called Big Boss. Perhaps the big boss team is still engrossed inside him and he's using that. You know, his, his attitude towards his players, you know, costs a lot of wranglings in the team. You know, when somebody, I read in one of, you know, the tabloids, they say the, the problem he has with uh, Victor Moses was, why Victor Moses asked him, why, why didn't you put your sons in the first match? That was his, he, you know, as a big boss, like his name reflects, he don't want anybody. Yeah, but why will, does Victor Moses ask his coach in, in Chelsea or Liverpool, why didn't you put a certain player? Uh, so what did they do in their gloves? Why would they come and do it in the national team? Well, but there's freedom of, there's freedom of speech. You can always, 
you know, you can always... Also, that there's, also, like. there's also freedom <laughs> of, uh, of the of, boss to of say, this, of this sit system. down and don't play. Of this, but we expect him as the leader of that team to take certain steps that will create more harmony and cohesion, not one that will disperse. You know, that is the issue, that's the angle we are talking about. If a player causes problem and you see him as a very very terrible tool in the team, you don't despise him because of your own personal sentiment. Look about the public interest. I think that is more paramount. You know, for, for those who say, you, you say he lacks uh, tactical depth mm -hmm. and uh, he showed up on the day. Yeah. I mean, it was the same coach who Nigerians cru crucified, criticized mm -hmm. at the Nations Cup, but he eventually went and got us the Nations Cup, that trophy which we waited for several years. And then he's out now. And everybody, have we suddenly forgotten how that happened? Remember, there were teams that were ranked higher than Nigeria in the Nations Cup who didn't win. Okay. So what do we say about the, the own Nations coaches? Cup. The Nations Cup, the World Cup, that's the center. The World Cup is the center of excellence. It's the theater. It's the theater where everybody wants to excel. I, I don't think that two different things. The problem with the Nations Cup was just the Sazi. They wanted him to invite the Sazi and he said, no, fine, he excelled. But in this world, there are a lot of controversy, quite a lot of controversy that is enough to destabilize even the most stable team in the world. So I think that, that itself was quite instrumental. Okay, now, in terms of the performance of Keshe yeah. as the Super Eagles coach, yeah. right from when he took up the job, yeah and when he lost this last game. Okay. How would you rate his performance? Right from when he took up the job. And, no, he, ha he has a good record. I have that going for him. But Locke also plays a great role in issues like this. He ha he's gotten a good record. But if you follow the Super Eagles right from the time he took over, you will still find out that tactical thing. We used to know. We, are all one, we all watch European teams. You know, it's just one change. The France coach did, and the game changed adding to what happened to Onazi, so he contributed further to our woes. There are little changes you can make, and you dramatically do, do, change. Doesn't the change depend on the quality of your bench? Why didn't you go with the best then? It, Who is the best that Nigeria has? How many of our players play in Champions League, for instance, compared to all the African countries who have that? How many? I, like I told you, I said we went to the World Cup with peripheral teams with peripheral players. So apart from Sunday in Bar, who, who was, who, who stuck out there? Who was fantastic? You didn't go to the World Cup with any established attacking midfielder. That is an indictment. The world football, the global game presently is played in the midfield. And you didn't go to the World Cup with an established attacking midfielder. You killed it. it you killed it right from the onset. You know, I was just wondering on a lighter note. I mean, since everybody knows football, everybody's a coach, why don't they apply for this job? Let's see how they perform. What I suggest is a Nigerian coach, fine, I am an advocate of a local content, but there should be a technical person to assist him. And perhaps, you know, he learned from that person, a highly technical person. So now that Keshe has said, look, nobody discussed any contract extension with him, mm -hmm. so he threw in the towel and says, I have to take a bow here. What do we do from here? Who uh, do we go for? Who do we go for? Yeah, quite a lot of, if you watch the, the global trend now, the whole world is you know, employing former internationals to take over. These are people who he, he is a former international? No, yes. Uh, I, I will also advocate for a former international. But what, a, 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 okay, not a foreign coach. No, there should be a foreign technical advisor to assist. There should be a local coach who understands the terrain, the players, the biometrics and everything. Then there should be a technical advisor, you know, well spelled out. Their roles will be well spelled out. No conflictory roles, no... This is your role, this is your role. And when it gets to this, this man interprets, when he gets to interpret, to back him up. I think that is what is lacking. Then also, uh, you know, NFF, we're always crying on phone. Send these coaches out for constant, you know, you know trainings and upgrades. Uh, I've never had, during all through the reign of Keshe, that he was sent out. No matter how he's coached this, he's coached this, there are still those condiments. They'll, current fresh condiments in football you need to go and get yourself acquainted with. But the thing about this now is that as much as there are those who say, no, Keshe, he didn't do what he ought to have done. We deserve better, especially for this last match. There are other countries who will welcome him with open arms, saying, listen, they don't want you. Come to One man's food is always another man's poison. Nobody is a total feeder all around. There's always, even there are people who like 
the, the, the bad life. So he's always there. there are people are waiting. He has a good record, not taking anything from him. But Nigeria, fine. They always say it's a difficult place to handle with the NFF and all that. It's always, it's always difficult to handle. But I think, for me, if he's stepping down, fine. Fine, because he has made a whole lot of enemies already. He's not the only one that's stepping. I mean, coaches of countries like Honduras, yeah. um, this, um, Iran's Carlos Queros, Japan's Alberto Zaccaroni, um, Italy, Cesare Prandelli, and Sabri Lamucci of so let, him follow, let him follow the footsteps. He should follow their yes, footsteps. Yes, he, he should, yeah, why I'm saying this is that Keishi has made a lot of enemies, both in the players, both in the NFL. And his continuous stay will continue aggravating a whole lot of things. So let, 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 let him shift aside. What lessons can we draw from the World Cup as we prepare? I mean, there are other tournaments that are coming up, but what lessons can we draw from The lessons we can draw is that in every major tournament, we should aspire to go with our best. We should not allow our personal sentiment to override our sense of reason. Yes, we do. It, it's always there. We always allow what personal things we have to overtake that of the public interest. And I think we, we should not allow that to be. But I don't know how to get that because if the NFF wants to intervene, they will be seen as interfering you know, with the work of the coach and all that. But I believe there's a way they can you know, work out something. And let, let's get the best for every major tournament. I don't allow our sentiments to overflow. But do you think, because those who are advocating a foreign coach, yeah. which foreign coach has ever won the World Cup, for instance? I, I didn't advocate for a foreign coach. I said... A no, I mean, there are people who are saying, let's go for a foreign coach. Yeah. Would you support that? Or you think... A technical backup. I always use that word. A technical backup. Let there be a technical backup. I am an advocate of local content. Ask them. But I got your of commerce. We already deal on local content. Okay. Let's, let, let's take a quick break. We'll, we'll come back and uh, take a look at some comments coming from people in just a moment. Okay. Join us again.